folks, welcome to Thunder Mesa Studio and this new series of maker videos that I'm calling Beyond Thunder Mesa. In these demos and how-tos, we'll be exploring some of my other creative interests that exist beyond the world of model railroading. Now one genre I've always been particularly interested in is the Middle Ages, both historically and as a setting for fantastical stories of swords, and dragons, and magic. So I couldn't think of a better way to kick things off than with the construction of my favorite type of medieval siege engine, a trebuchet. Now, since I'm freelancing the design, we'll call this more of a fantasy model than a historical one. But it is firmly based in the massive weapons that first appeared on medieval battlefields in the 12th century AD. Now this one is going to be roughly a quarter inch scale, and disclaimer, I've never built one of these before. So I'm modeling pretty much by the seat of my pants here. But hopefully, when all is said and done, this thing will actually work. Now, let's go back to a couple of days ago when this whole project began. The first trebuchets were built in China, somewhere around the 4th century BC, and were powered by men pulling on ropes. It wasn't until the 12th century that the idea found its way to Europe with the more familiar counterweight design we know today. Medieval trebuchets came in many shapes and sizes, with no real standardized design. I've opted for a rather tall and spindly machine to maximize throwing height and range. The main parts of a trebuchet are shown here. You have the frame, the beam, the counterweight, the trough, and the sling. While there are no standard designs, there are a couple of critical dimensions to keep in mind if you want your trebuchet to work. A ratio of 3.75 to 1 describes the beam length from the fulcrum to the tip versus the fulcrum to the counterweight. And the sling should be the same length as the throwing arm, measured from the tip to the fulcrum. And that should be enough basic info to get us started. Now the first thing I've done is created a, a scale drawing, uh, kind of a little plan here of one of the sides of the trebuchet. I'm going to need to build two of these. Uh, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite model building tricks. I'm going to take a little Super 77 spray adhesive, great stuff, but I don't want to breathe it. A little mask here. Okay, got a good even coating on there, and now we're going to carefully and position this on the foam core. Now, this is called a brayer, really handy item to have around for things like this. Cut this out, and this will be our template work surface work surface for creating these uh, side pieces. So we've got this bottom beam here. This is 12 by 12. Slightly warped. No, that'll add to the authenticity. So I'm going to mark this. I'm going to need two of those. And I've got my handy dandy razor saw with a fine tooth blade in it. this upright piece. It's close to the same size as I can get. These pieces are 8 by 8s. These uh, diagonal supports here. 
And in order to match this angle, I'm just going to, I'm going to eyeball it. Because you know what? Pretty sure that's the way they did it in the 12th century, too. Okie dokie. Now I need another one of these. Okay, that's the basic idea. Now we have four of those. Right? Two of these. Two of these. And I need two eight by eight cross pieces, one for each side. Now, I'm going to do a little extra step here because I like to weather things as I go and make them look like they're actually been used. So I'm going to weather this. I'm going to distress this wood a little bit. And you can use a, a brush, a steel brush like this to do it, um, which I do sometimes, but I actually prefer to use the edge of my razor saw. And I've worn out plenty of razor saws this way. So I'm gonna do, go all the way around to all four sides of each one of these pieces. Just to give it a little bit of definition in the grain. Now I want to show you one of my favorite time-saving tricks for something like this. And that is Minwax Stain Markers. You see that? What I'm going to use here, because I want a darker finish, I'm going to use dark walnut. That was not great to get on your hands, so put on uh, some gloves. really speeds things up. And if you want a darker tone or slightly different tone, you can go over with a different color, the early American, cherry, different uh, different tones. And now, I'll show you where this little bad boy really pays off. Where's my, there it is. Handy dandy packaging tape. Just going to take this and put it right over the top of the drawing as smoothly and evenly as I can manage. And what this will do is during construction, so I can build the sides right on top of this drawing, get them as accurate as possible. And what the tape does, it keeps the glue from sticking to the paper. There, one more piece. I want to do it. Okay. Take the bottom piece, put that in position. And how do we hold it in position? I am so glad you asked. Pins. That's why we use the foam core, you see. Just lining it up with the drawing here. Here. There. And there. And that will hold that in position while we glue these pieces in place. Now I'm building this kind of inside out. So this is the inside facing um, part of the, of the frame. Let me just use this as a block. Give me some height here. There we go. And I'm just going to put a little dab right there. I'm going to 
glue this bad boy on here. As straight and true as I can. Once again, eyeballing. What I do. Pin here. Pin there. Here. Keep that from moving around too much. I'm just gonna press down on that for a minute until that glue bites in. And again, I'm just lining this up with my drawing underneath, and you know I've built Railroad trestles this way, and trusses, and uh, mine head frames, anything like that, where you need this kind of precision, for lack of a better word. my drawing underneath it shows me exactly where I need to put little dabs of glue. The only thing I've come across in my research is that these things were often put together with wooden pegs hammered in rather than iron hardware. I might do a little bit of both, but I want to uh, try something right here. I'm going to do a, a wooden peg right in the middle here. I'm not sure what size drill bit this is, I'll be honest. I just uh, matched it to the size of this wooden toothpick I'm going to use. Dab of glue on the end of this toothpick. Not too much. Show it right down in that hole. Then, some flush cut nippers. Do that. You see that? Got yourself a wooden peg joinery on there. I'll do the same these other joints. Okay. One down. Now we'll build the other side. Well, now we've got two matching sides. Line these up. Not too bad. And now we build the ground base for it. And for those, we're going to use quarter inch stock, or in this, uh, in this scale, would be 12 by 12s, right? About 12 feet wide. So 12 feet is 3 inches in quarter inch scale. For these, you're actually going to notch these with a, uh, a dado down there so the uh, these will fit down, will sit down inside of these cross pieces. And the end of the line, turn on a medieval gun with a medieval axe.
Okay, for the trough, I'm going to use um, four lengths of O scale 6 by 12s. So I need four pieces about yay long. Actually, I needed five pieces three for the bottom of the trough, and one each for the two side rails. The rails were glued edge on to the bottom. Then the entire assembly was centered and glued to the base frame supports. I decided to support the axle for the throwing beam with pillow blocks at the top of the frame made from scale 6x12s. Small files were then used to create half round channels for the axle on the top and bottom sections of the blocks. See, that's, that's what we're going for right there. Then it was time to put the beam together. It was built up from scale 8x8s and 6x12s, put together like a sandwich. The lumber was cut to length, stained, and then assembled with yellow carpenter's glue. Holes were drilled through the beam at the fulcrum point, and some .04 phosphor bronze wire was cut to length to create an axle. side of this saddle, which will make it a lot stronger. I'm actually going to use them as a mechanical connection. And that brings us to the end of part one of this build. In part two, we'll finish the trebuchet by adding a sling, counterweight, and final details. Then we'll test it out to see if it really works. Thanks for watching.